Hello everyone, uh, my name is Firas Shari, I'm CWNE uh, 348. Um, this is going to be the third video in the series of the AX uh, training, Wi-Fi 811 AX training. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the, um, the Phi protocol data unit or the uh, PPDU. Uh, PPDU is a concept that has been introduced in the AX standard uh, to um, describe the frame format that is used in the AX. Uh, there are actually frames that are used for backward compatibility that helps the um, station or APs, um, AX uh, station or APs to communicate with older uh, and legacy devices. And they are um, newer frame frames or newer PPDUs that actually use only to communicate between um, AX uh, APs and AX device, uh, stations. Um, so if we look here, like all frames, all the new frames start with um, um, a legacy training feed, a legacy signaling field. So the whole purpose of this is actually to um, uh, communicate to older legacy client that there is an AX transmission going on and they need to, you know, back up and not transmit on top of it. Um, we have four types of new PPTUs. The new PPTUs are the SU, which is used for uplink and downlink, um, a single user transmission, whether it's an, um, um, a multi-user MIMO or a, or or a single um, uh, or a single uh, uh, spatial stream, uh, but this is this is the type of frame you would use um, if you're transmitting if you have only one AP trans you know communicating with one client, whether that on the uplink or the downlink. Then we have the MU transmission, which is uh, MU downlink transmission, which is used for whether uplink, uh, sorry, downlink multi-user MIMO or downlink of DMA. Uh, then we have the extended range issue. This is used for outdoors um, uh, transmission, uh, outdoors communication, and it helps with it, it helps with the um, um, fighting the uh, the doubler effect. Um, uh, the last thing is the uplink, which is the S, um, it's the MU uplink, which is the trigger paste. Basically, and this is um, this is the uh, type of um, transmission that the station will send on the uplink to the AB after a trigger frame, um, um, asking the clients to participate in either an off DMA or an uplink multi-user MIMO transmission. An uplink of DMA or an uplink multi-user MIMO. Um, we're not being, we're not gonna be talking about um, uplink multi-user MIMO a lot because like it's still not implemented yet. It's um, even though the foundation in the standard is there, but it's not gonna be part of the wave one. So we haven't seen it yet um, in the market, but we're definitely gonna be talking about the uplink of, of DMA as a part of those um, these videos. Okay, so uh, if you look at the start, uh, if you look at the first part of the preamble, we have the legacy short training field, and then we have the legacy uh, training field, and then we have the signaling, legacy signaling, and the, the repeated legacy signaling. So the the, the purpose of the, the short training field is, um, the training field in general, is to, you know, synchronize and the sync the transmitter with the receiver. So it helps the the um, um, helps the receiver to align with the transmitter. Okay, the signaling part, the legacy signaling part, is there to actually um, help the uh, the legacy client understand that there is an AX transmission going on, and they need to back up for the duration of this frame. So even though even if the the legacy client client try to decode the rest of the frame the frame it's gonna come back with error so they're not gonna get any a lot of much of information out of it but the the signaling part here allow the allow the AX AP um, you know station or AP to tell older clients legacy clients that there is a transmission going on and they need to back up and and not to transmit on top of it. Um, after that, we see what we call the signaling A, the HE signaling A. So the signaling A is a is a um, is a mandatory part in all like four. You can see it here in all four um, uh, PPDU types. Uh, the the signaling A is a, is a part of the fra the preamble that actually holds all the information needed for the. Uh, uh, to decode the rest of the frame, so it has the num the MCS rates, the number of spatial streams, uh, the the TXOB remaining time, the uh, the uh, 
uh, uh, the pieces coloring, um, even if there is um, any um, uh, spatial reuse parameters that allow uh, allow others to take advantage of the um, uh, of the uplink multi-user MIMO um, 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 opportunity and transmit on top of it. All of that information is conveyed in the signaling a um, um, part of the preamble. So whatever you need, whatever the station needs to um, decode is, is, is there. Okay, then there is the signaling B. The signaling B is only a part of the MU downlink transmission. And, and the, the purpose of signaling P is to provide all the information needed for the multi-user transmission to be decoded. So if we're talking off DMA, so let's first talk about like the, the two parts of the signaling P. So the signaling B has two parts. We have, you have the common information and you have the pair user information. So the common information, for example, will um, uh, specify all the RUs allocated and to, who's, to whom is being allocated to. So it's gonna like tell all the clients, so, okay, so this is, this is the R specific, this is the RU, for example, RU 242 is allocated to client one, and then, then 106 is the client two, and so on. And then you have the second part of SIGB, which is the, um, uh, the peer user. So the peer user is is used to tell each client the the information needed for them to decode that specific RU and uh, is it includes the MCS rates, the the um, uh, the um, the number of spatial stream and so on. And and the thing is like there is no, really not much of a difference between a, a downlink a multi-user MIMO and a downlink OFDMA from the standard perspective. Basically, all you need uh, all the difference between them is the information, the SIG A and the SIG B. So so let's assume that you're doing um, uh, OFDMA on the downlink. So what's gonna happen is the AP is gonna um, um, tell. Um, um, tell the clients the RU allocated to each one of them in the common part. In the pair user, it's going to tell each one of them that they're going to be using all the spatial streams. Uh, so if the AB has a 4x4, four four, so all of them will be uh, transmitting, you know, uh, will be receiving on uh, four spatial streams. But they're going to be limited to their part of the uh, part of the bandwidth. So if, if exactly, for example, if we're doing an 80 megahertz uh, um, of DMA and the downlink, and you have four clients, you're going to divide it into four um, uh, 20 megahertz, which is a 242 um, um, RUs. So what you're going to do is like you're going to assign each client one of those RUs. And on the per, per user, uh, per user um, uh, part, you're just going to tell each client, okay, so you're going to be, you're going to be, you're going to be, uh, you're going to be using four, you're going to be receiving four spatial streams in this RU and so on. If it's the other way around, if you're doing multi-user MIMO, and it, it's just going to be uh, the other way around. So you're going to tell each client, okay, so it's only going to be one RU. You're going to be all assigned the 80 megahertz, but in the pair user um, um, uh, field, you're going to tell each client, okay, so... For, for the first client, you're going to be assigned one spatial stream. For the second client, you're going to be assigned the second spatial stream, and so on. So it's just a matter of like which type of resources you're uh, distributing between the clients, whether you're doing multi-user MIMO or doing off DMA. It's all um, it's all the information needed to uh, for the client to participate in a downlink multi-user MIMO or a downlink off DMA are in the SIGB um, um, uh, part of the preamble. And, and and that actually, uh, like I said, there is no there is no distinguish between like multi-user MIMO and off DMA. It's just the same process. You can you can actually do uh, off DMA on top of multi-user MIMO as well, or multi-user MIMO on top of off DMA. Uh, the uh, the short signaling. Um, the the other part that we see after that is the um, the short training field and the long training field. And those, excuse me. And those are um, you know. Um, Part of all to all four types of PBDUs, um, basically those are used for um, um, uh, the they help they help they help with the uh, automatic gain control uh, to to sync the transmitter and the receiver, and also to help the receiver estimate the MIMO channel. So the long the long training field are are used to help the receiver um, estimate the channel um, for the. Um, um, uh, to help decode the MIMO channel. 
Okay, so then we have the data, right? So this the data is the load that you want to transmit either on the downlink or the uplink or, you know, depends on transmission, right? Uh, the P, the P is a, is a bit of interesting uh, concept, actually, that has been introduced in, in the AX. So a packet extension, a packet extension is just padding that you add to the, uh, um, to the, to the frame or to the PBDU. And one would wonder, it was like um, AX is all about... Um, you know efficiency. So why would you be adding, you know, pad, um, adding padding to the um, uh, to the frame and just, you know, um, and reduce your efficiency? And the problem is like with AX with the uh, the increase of the or let's say the quadruple of the frames uh, the frame time uh, from VHD um, um, now that, that the clients have to spend much uh, a lot. Of, a longer time to decode all the data coming into that frame, uh, and that actually poses a problem for low cost, uh, low cost uh, clients. So those clients, they don't sometimes they don't have the necessary like enough um, uh, processing power to actually um, process all this data coming into like a twelve point um, eight. Um, microsecond frame with couple of with two spatial streams for example and generate an acknowledgement within um, a short interframe space which is a 16 microsecond so sometimes it's not enough for them uh, there is not this time is not enough for the clients to you know process all this data and generate an acknowledgement so they actually negotiate something called the packet extension with the ap so they tell the ap that we need for example an extra of eight microsecond or an extra of four microsecond to generate an acknowledgement uh, on top of the, the the 16 microsecond of the short interframe space uh, and and what they be does is actually add a padding to the end of the to the end of the um uh, the ppdu that you know um helps keeping the channel busy and uh, so no one will interfere or like jump on the channel and try to transmit before the clients can uh generate um uh, acknowledgement and send it back um, okay, so the other thing that we like we need we need to know is like the sig b actually is is repeatable. So like it is repeated on each twenty megahertz um, um, uh, chunk of the band. So if you're doing eighty megahertz uh, transmission, your sig a will be transmitted will be repeated and on on um, on each one of them. For the sig b on the other side, it's different. So if you're doing if you're doing like if the AB is transmitting is doing OFDMA on the downlink for um, with 80 megahertz for four clients, each one of them um, is um, uh, is assigned a 20 megahertz chunk. The SIGB will be different in each one of them. So the SIGB will have the you know information needed for um, each one of them um, in the 20 megahertz. Uh, the on the uplink side on the uplink side if, if the A, if the clients are participating on the uplink OFDMA. They actually um, the sig b is is um, is unified between them and it's being transmitted with all clients at the same time uh, within the same uh, within the same um, um, data. So the sig b is is uh, is unified between all cloud between all clients on an uplink. Okay, uh, if we look here, a uh, quick look into the legacy uh, PB, the, the, the PBDUs that used to uh, for communication with legacy clients, we can say we can see here there is um, there is um, a um, uh, there is a PBDU used for legacy client non HT, and then you have uh, um, a, your normal HT mix mode, and you have your HT uh, greenfield where you only have only n clients, and then you have um, one is used to tr to communicate with VHT um, uh, clients. Uh, the um, the uh, the other important thing that we can um, look at it here is the extension the extension issue. So the extended issue. Is used um, for outdoors and to um, 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 to fight um, to fight the doubler effect. Uh, basically, like uh, the the difference between um, an issue and extended range issue is that the extended use is only used for twenty megahertz um, bandwidth. Uh, there is actually a medamble uh, plus uh, plus the preamble that has um, um, uh, where the AP will um, uh, 
um, or the, the station, the AX station will repeat the, the, the training field to help estimate the channel throughout the, the whole um, transmission so that that will, you know, help, um, you know, fight the, the doubler effect. Um, it's also there is um, there is some limitations on the MCS rates used in it and the number of spatial streams. Um, I don't exactly remember all the details, but it's all in the standard. But it's not it's not your average uh, issue where the AP or the client have the uh, you know um, the um, um, they can use whatever is available to them. There is some limitation on the um, on the extended um, issue. Uh, that's going to be all for this video. Thank you very much for um, uh, for watching. Um, I hope um, this this actually um, helps uh, people out there trying to understand the PBDU concept and what's going on with the AX. Um, uh, the next we're going to be talking about like off DMA, um, CSMA, and you know off DM off DMA. Um, thank you very much. Have a great day.